I mean, in theory, I work in the morning, in theory, I get up and, and go to my desk, in theory, I work. I mean, you can't write fiction very long. You know, nonfiction, you can actually write for a sustaining amount of time. Fiction, for me, three or four hours, and I've pretty much had it. So, uh, but revising again, I can do, you know, for hours at a time. So, I just work until I can't stand it anymore, and then I stop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what else. I mean, not, again, nonfiction is different because because there's research and, and I have the information, so I'm just just about putting. Yeah, that my my question came from from the fiction point. From the fiction point of view, yeah. I you know I don't know. I'm working on the, I, the the problem for me more and more is that I it is is the problem of finding sustained periods of time to write because writing a novel, you really have to give yourself a way to get lost in that world. And every interruption from it is an interruption from that world. So, so you know, you're creating this other world, and then and then you want to stay in it. As, you know, as a friend of mine said, you're dismantling your brain. And and once it's dismantled, any interruption is, is whatever, mantling it again. So, you, know, so um, you know, so whatever you can do to just have that world be as complicated and full and, and fully realized and to enter into it is, is the only thing I can say is, is necessary for the process. Yeah. Um, I just wondered, you said that, and I agree, that when you and your husband were reading David Coverfield, it was having a whole group of new friends, which I think is but I have not read all of Branson's book that I've read more of it, and I don't personally agree with it. I'm not thrilled with it. So they Lots of people aren't, but you know, that's they're not my new friends. I mean, well, you wouldn't <laughs> want to be friends with those people. <laughs> you know, with those people. But, but I, I had a kind of vicarious curiosity. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. You know, my question is <coughs> everybody loves the David Copperfield characters, and they are your new friends. So if you don't, I mean, you like spending time with friends and new characters, which I didn't, or don't. Uh, um, how do you? Oh, I know. How do you, yeah. How do you? Well, you know, it, it's a good question because there's this, this, it's a whole, it's a kind of complicated thing now because somehow, what do I want to say? It's crept into the culture that, that, that you have to like Characters, or you should be sympathetic with characters to be involved in a book. But I don't. But but it never was. I mean, for example, again to return to Crown and Punishment, which is the example I always use. You know, here's a guy who, for no reason, acts murders two old women in the first section. You know, within the first fifty pages of the book. Now, you say like, uh, I can't really sympathize with some guy who would do that. So how can I read this book? But but the joy is in a way, finding out about people who are not like us, who don't, who do things we would never do, who, who, you know, and, and, but also, what do I want to say? I mean, honestly, I think that, the, I don't know, this may just be me, that I, that I tend to have a sort of overly positive view of my own character. Like, you know, I like to think, oh, I'm a good person, and I wouldn't do this, and I wouldn't do that. And, and there are all these kind of unexplored areas of my character that when I'm reading something about, about characters who are, who are less than ideal in every way, if I'm really reading, I think, well, actually, I can understand exactly what that's like. Exact, actually, this is something about human nature or my nature or character. So, so reading about, let's say, the Jonathan Francis book, I mean, those people were unpleasant in so many ways, are unpleasant in so many ways. And, I, so, and nonetheless, it was like I was hearing, I don't know, <coughs> 500 pages of the best gossip about people I didn't want to hear, you know, no, personally. So, I thought they were bored. I wasn't bored. But, you know, boredom's a strange thing. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Boredom's a strange thing. I mean, I'm often, I'm, it's, I'm often bored by things that I find that see on the bestseller list. All the, you know, I can't. You know, here's 
I, I'm not saying this, okay? But I can't read. I can't, I can't read Stephen King because I find it so insanely boring. But I'm in a small minority here. I mean, lots of people can read Stephen King. So, so you know, boredom is, is as personal as, as a food taste. You know, some people don't like pears. <laughs> You were saying about forgetting sometimes what you read and just remembering it on an unconscious level. Does it happen to your own writing? Like, for example, when you see it like years and years later, and rereading your books um, later, does it teach you anything about yourself or your mind at a certain point or any other thing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't, I have no idea. You know, I've been writing now. My first book came out in 1973. I was a child. I have no idea what this. I mean, well, you know, two examples. Um, one is that what, two years ago, one year ago, two years ago, um, these wonderful people made a musical <coughs> out of one of my novels, my second novel, which came out in 1974, and um, it was a long process, and 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 I kept going to rehearsals, and I, and I kind of loved the work they were doing, and and they kept saying to me things like, well. We change this character. We, you know, I hope you don't mind. We, and and I had no idea what happened. In this I no idea. And, and I said, that, no, it's fine. You know, it's fine. It's really something. And, and finally, I got busted. The woman who was writing the book said, "You have no idea what happened in that." <laughs> Life is short. I'd rather read somebody else's. I don't want to take I mean, likewise, uh, and it, it happens to me when the book shows up in other forms. I mean, they made a movie of one of my novels, which came out in '93, and I'd written the book in '81, so you know, it wasn't quite such a long time. But it was, and and when I I, I went down to North Carolina and they were filming it, and I kept being shocked. I mean, I have to say by how good it was, and I just didn't know that it was in the novel. I thought, boy, they've done some major work, you know, fixing this up. Well, it was in the novel, so, so no, but in that case, um, I did find out something, which, which it seemed to me that the person who'd written that novel, you know, 12 years before, was, had a much sunnier and more optimistic disposition than I had. Right? You know, that, I mean, that person hadn't lived through Bush, yeah. and Reagan the way I had. So, you know, things had happened in the world since then that, that 